Imagine you have an iMac and the mouse dies or it breaks, or say you're using a MacBook and the trackpad breaks. Did you know you can actually control your cursor through your keys in emergency situations as well as for times that you need extreme precision. Hi everyone, Harris here with idownloadblog.com. We've made a video for iPhone tips, Apple Watch tips, and iPad tips. Now we have a couple hands full of tips just like that for your Mac, and this video is brought to you by Audible. And of course, you know Audible. They have an unmatched selection of audiobooks that you can stream to your mobile phone, tablet, or even, of course, your computer, your Mac. They have Audible Originals, which are exclusive audio titles created by celebrated storytellers from worlds as diverse as theater, journalism, literature, and more. And in 2019, how can audiobooks help you become a better parent, a better leader, a better person, uh, using their motivating fitness programs to get you more fit or inspire you to start something new? I remember years ago listening to the Audible audiobook for the Steve Jobs biography, and it's incredibly engaging to be listening while you're reading. You can actually get your first audiobook for free when you try Audible for 30 days using audible.com slash IDB, or even easier, text IDB to 500-500. Again, that's audible.com slash IDB, or IDB to 500-500 to get your first month free and to try out a free audiobook from Audible. So going back to that first tip, there's actually an accessibility option that lets you turn on mouse keys, and this lets you use 7, 8, 9, and the corresponding letter keys below to control the direction of your mouse, going diagonals, up, down, left, and right. So every axis you can control the mouse, as well as click using the I key in the middle, uh, and you can hold a click as well using the period button down below. This is awesome if you were to ever have a situation that your trackpad dies, you have no way of using a mouse input, uh, but you can still do that via your keyboard, which is very handy. Or at the same time, if you're in creative work or you need really high precision movements with your mouse, this is an awesome way to do that with the mouse keys. Now speaking of high precision movements and adjustments, if you've ever wanted something more exact for your volume or your brightness and you're kind of a perfectionist or OCD about exact brightnesses and exact volume amounts and you're just very particular about that, you actually have the ability to change it in finer than just the default adjustments. If you hold down Option and Shift while you adjust the volume or the brightness, it'll allow you to do it in much finer increments. Similarly, when you use the option key to press on a button on your function row, it'll hop into those settings. So if you do option brightness, it'll take you into displays, option volume, it'll take you right into your sound preferences, etc. It's very handy um, to jump right into your settings on your Mac. Now another use of the option key is to pull up picture in picture. So if you're on a website that doesn't have picture in picture supported natively, you can option click on that video and it will allow you to pull up a picture in picture so that the video will go down into the corner and you can continue to operate your computer um, while that video is playing in the corner. And this is very handy for the sites that do not support it. Now if you go to the menu bar, of course you have all of those icons up at the top. Uh, but did you know you can actually move those around, like they're not set in stone. If you command and click, you can drag that around very simply. And secondly, with the menu bar, if you're somebody like me, I love screen real estate and I love maximizing that. That's why I have my dock hidden by default, um, and then whenever I need to use something in the dock, I just bring my cursor down and I can pull up something in the dock, and I like to have that extra screen real estate. You can actually hide the menu bar in your general settings, um, in the settings application, your systems preferences on your device. You can go in there, turn off menu bar, um, turn on menu bar hiding, so that way anytime you're using an application, you're getting the maximum screen real estate. If you ever need it, you just slide right up, and the menu bar will pop up. It's not quite as obtrusive as a full screen mode would be, but essentially accomplishes the same thing, and I'm a big fan. Now, Apple's really gotten good with their smart features on these devices. So one of the things that you can do is use smart stacks on your desktop. This is a Mojave feature, and you might know about this one, but I still want to talk about it because it's one of my favorite features. I'm somebody that has things constantly going to my desktop, especially screenshots and downloaded images um, and files and music and stuff like that. Um, as well as all my exported videos go to my desktop. I use smart stacks to automatically organize all of that because without it, you can see what it looks like and it's not great. Now another smart feature is smart folders. 
So say you're working on documents, you're working on a lot of presentations or whatever the instance may be, and you have them going to different folders where you're saving them, different locations, but you want somewhere where you can find all of them. Say all of the presentations that you've made within the last two weeks, you want to go to one folder automatically, but you want to save them in different locations for organization purposes. You can set up a smart folder that way that all of the things that match the criteria that you set will automatically be there and that's just very handy and very smart. Additionally, in iTunes, this is an old school trick, this isn't anything new, but a lot of people don't know about this, you can actually set up smart playlist in iTunes and I love this. You can do this to automatically accumulate um, your top played music, you can do this to uh, filter in all of your new songs so that you can automatically have it downloaded. Um, this is actually a really neat trick if you do this, you can have all of your music in your playlist downloaded to your device if you use Apple Music and more. There's a bunch of ways to get creative with this and create smart playlists on iTunes. If you're like me and sometimes you need a document that you edited but is long gone in terms of that edit, you can actually restore versions of a document very easily. If you go into the file and you go to revert and you can see your whole history of past versions, they're saved in iCloud um, and you can go back through and you can see each revision. So if you accidentally put in a part of a paper that you didn't mean to and you need to show your professor um, that that was not there before, just before you printed that document, you can go there and restore past versions and that's very fine-tuned and I like that a lot. If you're interested in seeing how long it's been since your Mac last rebooted. Uh, I don't know necessarily practical reasons for this, but maybe for troubleshooting an issue and you need to know when's the last time you restarted your computer, maybe to see if this was a cause of an issue, or you're just interested in general to see when the last time you restarted your computer, you can accomplish this, and it's pretty simple. And finally, something that brought a lot of joy to my life, if you have a Touch Bar MacBook, like I do, um, I'm not a fan of the Touch Bar, I think it's kind of useless, and I just miss the function row. Of course, you can revert the Touch Bar just to being um, your function row with the smart commands. You can revert your touch bar to how it is on a normal Mac, which just has your quick actions. So it goes back to the standard uh, command bar, which is great. But this is even better. This adds a perk over the non-touch bars because you can add icons and you can add actions onto that command bar. For me, I just add do not disturb. So I have a very quick and easy do not disturb button right on my touch bar. Um, and that never goes away, that's always there, there's no annoying touch bar actions with that. So if you have one of the newer computers, you can customize this. So for me, if I'm ever handing my computer off to somebody, I just click Do Not Disturb, so I don't have to worry about notifications coming in, instances like that. Anyway, I hope some of these Mac tips were new for you. If they were, let me know which ones down in the comments section. Make sure to check out our top iPhone, Apple Watch, and iPad tip videos. I'll leave those linked down in the description. And of course, make sure to check out Audible using the link in the description or texting our code to the text number. Thank you for watching.